thank you all for being here. I want to start by thanking my fabulous host, uh, the energy minister, Prince Abdulaziz bin Salman, and the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. It's so welcoming for myself and our delegation from the United States to come talk about our nations, our road to cooperation, our road for mutual beneficial progress going forward. We've, we've had very wide-ranging dialogues for a day and a half now, and they're going to continue. We've talked about energy in all aspects of energy. We've talked about mining criti in critical materials. We've talked about processing and in industry. We've talked about climate change. We've talked about human lives and what drives their improvement and how best to achieve those ends. We've talked about some of the obstacles that both of our countries have struggled with in the last several years, particularly on energy. You know, we've had a growing global movement, including in my country, the United States, that stood in opposition to energy development, somehow thought the road to a better world was less energy, less empowerment of individuals, um, and therefore less economic prosperity and less freedom. So our, our, our broader objectives, which we share, are prosperity at home and peace abroad. We've also talked about geopolitics. Peace abroad is every bit as critical as prosperity at home, but they're linked together. They're linked together. Our, our newly elected President Trump was elected very much on a platform of removing barriers in the United States to the prosperity of our citizens, and by making America stronger and our people more prosperous, our relationships with our allies stronger, we can achieve peace abroad. That's the broader agenda we, we discussed. We came at the end to an agreement we're coming together on, an, on a memorandum that's broad, and I will announce that right now. We will sign it at a later date, but we've developed a broad memorandum of so many areas that the two countries will work together in cooperation to better develop energy resources, energy infrastructure, both in the United States and here in the kingdom, mining cooperation, uh, civilian nuclear technology and energy production. We're gonna work on that as well. There's simply so many aligned interests of our two nations. So I will announce the agreement of a memorandum. There'll, there'll be a separate date where we'll sign that memorandum and announce more of the specific efforts that are gonna be launched based on that. But I'll stop there and, and happy to take a few questions. So hello, Mr. Wright, and welcome to Saudi Arabia. This is Rina Ta'ala from Arab News. I'm the head of the business section there. And I have two in one question. Uh, you've mentioned a lot of uh, uh, discussions and uh, uh, some MOUs that you've signed. Uh, could, you share, could you tell us more details about the outcome of the discussions? I know it's not, they're not done yet, but maybe you can give us more details about that. And my second question is the following. So Saudi Arabia is, has ambition uh, investments in renewable energies like the green hydrogen, and solar. Uh, does the U.S. see the kingdom as a potential or a future clean energy partner, in addition of it being the traditional oil uh, ally? Thank you. Yes, what we've discussed and what will happen is cooperation really across all of the major energy sources. So yes, U U.S. technology, U.S. partnership across these. I never use the term clean energy because there is no such thing as clean energy and there is no such thing as dirty energy. They're simply different energy technologies with different strengths and different weaknesses. They all involve trade-offs. Um, but abso absolutely, great solar resources here in the kingdom, great room for technology improvement there. So we talked across the energy spectrum. I think Saudi Arabia has clearly been a nation built on efficient and thoughtful development of energy resources. Those same principles apply for all different energy sources. Thank you, Mr. Wright. And, uh, welcome to Saudi. Amidst the current turmoil and the global markets and uh, the uncertainty about energy demands and the uh, recessionary pressures, how do you view your um, relationship with other producers? And um, are you willing to engage with OPEC to avoid further fluctuations? 
we've we've had it we've had zero dialogue about short term movement of energy prices. That's politics. That's business or whatever. What we talk about is how do we encourage investments that develop a growth in long term supply of energy. We've got a billion people in the world living lives like all of us sitting in this room today, and seven billion people that aspire to live like us. I think it's very clear the world needs a lot more energy, and energy takes a long time to develop. So you've got to plan energy investments over decades, not weeks or months or volatility of that. But I think the cooperation we've talked about and some changes in policy in the United States. Are going to lead to faster economic growth in our two countries and faster global economic growth.、Um, this is great for for humanity and great for progress. But to achieve that, you've got to have investments in energy in, across a wide spectrum and energy infrastructure to enable that future prosperity. Hello, Mr. Wright. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. Mr. Wright, you are visiting the Gulf during a difficult time for the world economy, and the oil prices are at their lowest in over four years. So, what message are you sharing with leaders about、uh, tariffs and、uh, how uncertainty、uh, tariffs are affecting energy markets? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, President Trump、uh, came in with with the. Way to change the economic policy of the United States and the ways we dealt with the rest of the world. A lot of this is misunderstood. So let me summarize two brief points that are central to President Trump's economic agenda, and, and tariffs are certainly part of that. The, the first point is the United States has been very welcoming to imports from countries around the world, to the benefits of those countries and to the benefits of American citizens. But he's very keen to get. Our trading partners to be equally as welcoming to American imports. He's trying to grow the flow of goods outside of the United States into other countries while sustaining imports and engagement with countries from around the world. So that that's that that's a way you could describe as fair trade, not restricted trade, just fair trade, reciprocal trade. The other part of his agenda is the last you know two plus decades. The United States has seen a lot of our, particularly energy-intensive industries, move outside of our country and be outsourced somewhere else. Things that we develop technologies and used to produce in the United States. This has hollowed out sort of the working class in our country. If you're in advertising or finance, you, you've had a great 20, 25 years, but too many Americans have seen their job opportunities shift overseas and therefore reduced economic opportunities for them. Reduce security for their families. He ran on a platform to bring those jobs back to America.、Um, so tariffs are also a way to give a nudge and encourage investment into our country to make products in our country to grow economic opportunity and prosperity in America. I think Saudi Arabia will be one of the leading countries in investing in the United States. I think that's a win for the kingdom here. It's a win for the United States. And, and, and for us, most importantly, it's a win for the working class and American citizens to have better job opportunities and lower cost of goods for them. Partnership. Thank you, Mohammed with Arkham. Secretary, I thank you so much. Given your emphasis in unlocking prosperity through energy development, do you believe the current oil prices are sustainable enough to support the kingdoms? Ambitious upstream and critical minerals、uh, investment, and how essential is that investment to the U.S. on energy security and supply chain resilience goals? I never comment on short-term moves in oil prices. I will comment that I think under President Trump's leadership in the next four years, we're almost certainly to see lower average energy prices than we saw in the last four years of the administration. Americans were quite frustrated to see the price of their electricity rise a lot without any growth in our electricity production or no meaningful growth.、Um, they were they're frustrated to see powering their cars more expensive, their home heating bill is high. So President Trump got elected on an agenda to grow energy production, and if you grow the supply,、um, you're going to bring access to more people, and on the margin, you're going to push prices down. 
So do I think we'll see lower oil prices in the, in the next four years than we saw in the last? I do. I, I can't comment about where oil prices are today or where they're going. But if you reduce barriers to investment, reduce barriers to build infrastructure, you can lower the supply costs of energy. Therefore, corporations and nations can deliver similar profitability or reliability, but at a lower cost. We want to get the barriers, the inefficiencies out of way, and the pessimism that somehow demand for energy in the United States or globally is going to peak in the next few years. There's so much political force that's tried to say energy consumption is bad. Therefore, those 7 billion people that don't live like us, maybe they never should live like us, and they want to do everything possible to suppress the demand of energy. Um, that's the opposite, uh, I think, of the policies of the United States and President Trump. And I'm seeing great uh, agreement here in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, that the way to make the world a better place is to produce more energy, not less, more human prosperity, not less, and stronger partnerships. Great questions, by the way. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. You mentioned uh, cooperating with the Saudi on nuclear energy. Uh, what plans do you have, and uh, how will you contribute in developing the civil nuclear energy in Saudi? Fantastic. This has been an interest and an ambition in Saudi Arabia for some time. And I think for the obvious reason, this has been a nation that's central industry, far from its only industry, but its central industry has been energy production. And I would say quite successful in that industry. So Saudi Arabia has resources here, mineral resources, including uranium, and it has a desire to expand even further its energy production via commercial nuclear power. The technology for commercial nuclear power was developed in the United States. Um, and so we're beginning, di or not beginning, we're continuing dialogues about how best to cooperate United States and Saudi Arabia to ultimately build a commercial nuclear power industry in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, I think you'll see uh, meaningful developments on that this year. And I would, I would certainly expect to see a long-term cooperative partnership between the United States and the kingdom to develop commercial nuclear power right here in Saudi Arabia. Very excited and certainly more details of that will likely come out later this year.